Peace and blessings. How's everyone doing? Father Augustino here, and today is Monday of the fourth week of Lent, and we're here uh, doing our 40 days of fasting and prayer uh, for deliverance from sin. Not the coronavirus, but I want to take this from John chapter 9, verses 4, 5, and 6. It says, Jesus was saying, we must work the works of him who sent me while it is still day. Night comes when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. As he said this, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and anointed the man's eyes with the clay, saying to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Well, how are you guys doing with this gospel? First of all, can I just say that I think it's so cool that God spat. I mean, like, maybe that's like, you know, just because of where I'm from, I don't know. But I think it's, <laughs> what? Like, this, this earthy Jesus makes certain people feel uncomfortable. And not even like the germaphobes. I mean, like, let's not even talk about that. But of course, there's a meaning behind everything everything that Jesus is doing. Let's break it down. It all gets broken down into threes. So first of all, it starts out with the message of Jesus. Jesus has been sent by the Father. Jesus proclaims that he has been sent. And then Jesus acts on, acts in his mission by signs and wonders. So he is sent, he proclaims, he preaches that he is sent. And, and then he confirms that he has been sent by the Father by signs and wonders. Then what does he do? He spits, he puts clay on the man's eyes and tells him to wash. But then the man reacts, he is blind, he obeys, and then he is able to see. So let's just break this down real quick. Okay, what, what is Jesus talking about? You know, like, we got to do things during the day. It's like, well, what, Jesus didn't do miracles at night or something? Like, you know, what, what is this? So some of the, uh, the church fathers say that this is, this is meant to, to, to mean that uh, while he is here, he is proclaiming, and while it's still day, while there's still time, while, while people, while the proclamation, the fulfillment of all the scriptures is still being done while he's there, there, he, he, has to, he has to go. It's a little bit like what he said in Luke chapter 9, uh, that when he set his face on Jerusalem. You know, you ever see somebody who's so driven, like they have something that they got to finish it. Well, like this was this, like this, this burning fire. Luke 12, said, Jesus said, I have a baptism which I'm meant to be baptized and woe is me until it is completed. Like Jesus had a, just a, a, a burn within him, if I can use that word, to fulfill the mission. So um, before this, the disciples were saying, oh, whose fault is this? And Jesus said, no, it's not about that. It's like, you know what? I've been sent and it's time. I have to, I have to, I have to fulfill my mission here. You know, sometimes some people, they're like uh, wondering what God is asking them to do, whether they should do this or that. Uh, uh, they they, they want to know. Sometimes they want to know if they're supposed to, you know, ask the girl that they've been dating for 12 years if she should marry him. Uh, you know, uh, they, 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 they're kind of like, they're not sure. And they pray and they ask God, God, can you show me if I'm supposed to do this? Or they say novenas to St. Therese, St. Therese. Can you send me a blue rose with white polka dots if I'm supposed to like they, and it's, and it's a little, I don't know. What if we prayed with so many of the other saints for a burning desire to accomplish the will of our Father? This is what Jesus had. And then he proclaimed it. It's one thing to be sent. It's another thing to, 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 to claim it. He proclaimed it and said, I have been sent and I got to be about what my father wants me to be about. And then he acted on it. He spat on the floor, made some clay, put in the guy's eyes and says, go into that pool. Now, 
what was the active agent that caused this man to see? Some people were saying that like, well, you know, it's known that saliva is able to, to, um, to restore sight and certain things and stuff like that. It's like, you know, well, you know, well, then maybe it was the clay. Well, maybe it was the pool. Like, well, other people washed in the pool, didn't give them sight. Other people probably tried to spit on him and um, because it was known during this time, and we know this from, from Pliny the Younger, Suetonius, that the saliva was, was, was a, a folk remedy for blindness. So it's probably safe to say that they already tried it. They probably already tried the clay and they probably already tried washing him. That's why he was there and none of it worked until Jesus did it. But don't be mistaken. Jesus is some sort of folk healer. St. John Chrysostom said that the saliva signifies um, uh, the, the, the word of God. And it, when it came to earth, was mixed, was put on men's eyes and to confirm that he was sent, he, the, the man washed in the pool called Siloam, which means sent. Some of the other church fathers say that, that when, when Jesus was mixing the saliva with the, 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 the earth to form clay, it's like going back to the first creation where God formed Adam. All these things means to say that when we act like this blind, this blind man, we recognize we are blind. We obey when God speaks and he will restore to us sight. Blindness also in the New Testament is, is often a metaphor for, for sinfulness or for lack of faith. Um, do you want to fulfill God's will? Is this something that is, that is uh, like on your radar? Pray for that burning desire. And you will see that there's many areas in your heart that are blind because of lack of faith or sin. But when you obey Him and, and reconcile, forgive and be forgiven, you too will see. But then when you see, a whole bunch of other things happen. But we'll talk about this tomorrow on your daily Lenten meditation. Peace.